Mask of an Angel by John S. McCormick As Mary Stewart's dead body lies on her living room floor in a pool of her own blood, a police officer, Jack Martin, speaks into his handheld tape recorder. He says, It appears the victim has been stabbed many times and strangled. Her feet and hands are bound and her mouth gagged. There is what appears to be a cord from a lamp around her neck. Flashback six months. Kathy Jenkins, a highly successful vice president for a brokerage firm, was scheduled to meet with her new personal assistant, Mary Stewart. Kathy's boss, Tom Nichols, president and CEO of the company, said she came highly recommended. Tom hired Mary on his own, since Kathy was out of town on business, and desperately needed a replacement. Her former assistant had to have her employment terminated suddenly. Right away, Kathy and Mary hit it off. Kathy always told Mary that Mary had a face of an angel, and even though it was unprofessional and would be frowned upon if Tom or others knew, they became good personal friends. Kathy introduced Mary to her fiancé and wanted Mary to attend their wedding, scheduled in a few months. In the meantime, Kathy taught Mary all about the business. She promised Mary she would groom her for a promotion when one was available. Mary learned no one hardly ever left the business, so promotions were hard to come by. Mary had other plans on how to get ahead. She started sabotaging Kathy's work, causing her to get in trouble over and over again with Tom. Mary always did it in a way where it never appeared as any wrongdoing on her part. Mary also started meeting secretly with Kathy's fiancé, pretending to need his help with many things. Eventually, she seduced him. Kathy learned of the affair after she was fired from her job and Mary was promoted as her replacement. Mary wasn't satisfied enough with what she did. She wanted more. She learned that Tom, now her direct boss, was on a work visa to the United States and was desperate to find a way to stay in the country. After a few drinks one night, Mary suggested they get married and that it would be a business arrangement. She insisted all his money be put in both their names to make it look legit. It was a sum of around $2 million. Mary also insisted they pretend to live together, but secretly keep separate residences. She found an apartment she put under someone else's name where she wanted to live. Tom went along with everything. He, too, thought Mary was an angel. He was so grateful for her help. While living at the new apartment, Mary met Mike Kearney, her neighbor in the building. She knew right away he seemed a little shady. She needed someone to pretend to be Tom, mainly for financial reasons. Mike helped Mary by using fake IDs to remove Tom's name off of all the money in exchange for $50,000. Mary promised she would get the money to him soon. In the meantime, Mary bought some illegal drugs and planted them in Mike's car. She later called and tipped the police off anonymously. Mike was arrested. Now that all of Tom's money was in Mary's name, she made her final move. Mary anonymously called the local immigration office and reported Tom had a fake marriage and gave all the details. She told them where, in Tom's home, they could find all the documentation to prove it. Mary hid out in her apartment until she learned Tom was taken by immigration and placed into deportation. Mary was getting her bags together and preparing to leave the apartment and town forever when the doorbell rang. She looked out the peephole, but saw no one there. She decided to open the door anyway. Standing there were three people in the Three Stooges masks. Before Mary could shut the door, two of them grabbed her. One person had their hand over her mouth to muffle her screams. Mary was forced to the floor, and her arms were bound together first, and then her legs. Finally, her mouth was gagged. She was on her back facing up. The third person, who had just stood in the background, came forward and presented a huge knife. While Mary was being held down and tried to scream, this person knelt down and stabbed Mary in the stomach several times. 
The knife was passed to the next person, who stabbed Mary several times on the right side of her chest. The knife was passed to the last person, who stabbed Mary in the heart, also several times. Mary shook slightly on the floor, no longer trying to scream, but still aware. The masked killers took their masks off one by one to reveal their true identities. Mary first saw Tom, and then Mike, and finally, Kathy. At that point, Mike grabbed a lamp cord, putting it around Mary's neck, and strangled her until she was dead. Turns out, after getting out on bail, Mike had contacted Tom, who also was let go until his court date, and Kathy, about what Mary did. Together, they planned their revenge. Flashback to the present. When Officer Martin opens one of Mary's suitcases, he finds a thick folder. He opens it to find articles about a woman named Lisa Marshall, who looks just like Mary. The articles are about all the crimes and scams Lisa did, including murder. She once set an apartment building on fire, killing many people just to get revenge from an ex. Officer Martin finds an article about her being declared unfit to stand trial and committed to a mental institution. Then he sees another article about her escaping from this facility and never being seen again. Officer Martin put the tape recorder back to his mouth while looking at the articles. He says, Looks like a past finally caught up with her. <laughs> 